الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته It gives me great pleasure to share with you today an overview of a major initiative that Saudi Arabia launched more than eight months ago to introduce alternative energy in the national energy mix. Saudi Arabia is a country of growing population with youth constituting large percentage. The country's growth reached 3.8% in 2010 and is clearly on an upward path following a sluggish, albeit positive growth in 2009. Our industrial sector grew by 6.7% until 2008, and in 2009 it grew by 3.1%, which was much better than most economies for that year. This growth will require timely decisions and careful investments to continue fuel the economic development of the country and henceforth the prosperity of future generations. Saudi Arabia, as you very well know, is quite often referred to as the kingdom of energy and for good reason. Saudi Arabia has the largest proven oil reserve, the fifth largest gas reserve, and has developed its swing capacity to become the largest in the world. Why then has Saudi Arabia made the decision to expand the energy portfolio to include alternative energy? A careful assessment of where Saudi Arabia is from an energy point of view and where we are heading reveals cascading pattern of growing demand for energy fueled by the need to safeguard and, and, and enable further economic growth. This demand can only be met in business as usual scenario with a rapid growth in the consumption of oil. I will, show, I will share with you the rationale of why Saudi Arabia is moving toward the deployment of alternative energy and how we are going to do that, and which processes we are engaged in to deliver on this challenge. As a result of economic growth, economic growth it is expected that, elect that the electricity demand in Saudi Arabia will, will triple by 2032. And the demand for oil has also been growing at an alarming rate over the past four years, the total local demand on oil has grown by 27%. Our current fleet of power plants can barely meet current demand. And I have not even talked about establishing respectable capacity reserve or planned capacity retirement. The challenge, therefore, is to meet the growing demand reaching more than 80 gigawatt of additional required capacity by 2030 in a sustainable way. Ladies and gentlemen, a reasonable question to ask is why Saudi Arabia would not do what should look reasonable and natural to do, which is just to burn more oil and more gas to meet this demanding, demand increase. But there is a catch to this business as usual scenario. The catch is that by 2028, Saudi Arabia will be consuming more than 8 million barrels of oil equivalent to fuel its economy, including transportation, industry, and electricity. This may seriously hamper the kingdom's ability to meet international demand for oil and may adversely affect its leading position in the global energy landscape. This, on its own, is not a trivial challenge. 
and addressing it require innovative solution that require commitment, resources, and collaboration. There is, however, a plethora of other associated challenges that come with this business as usual scenario, including environment, social, and economic, and all require careful considerations. I will, however, focus in this presentation on the challenge of increased consumption of oil. Therefore, to address the challenge, we will need to usher in a new energy mix to meet the local needs, as well as maintain Saudi Arabia leadership role in the changing global energy landscape through carefully chartered transition toward greater sustainability. And we are not alone. Various countries in the world have adapted carefully tailored measures to meet their needs for energy. In Saudi Arabia, we may face a set of challenges different from those met by other countries. The growing local economy and industrial base, coupled with the relatively high population growth and higher per capita electricity demand, mandate a sustainable yet economically viable approach to generating electricity. Having said that, we, however, shall take a path well trodden as evidenced by the increasing global reliance on nuclear and renewable energy. Nuclear and renewable energy contributed 12% 12 uh, uh, 12 of the total installed capacity in 2007 and expected to reach and contribute 19% by 2030 with an annual growth of 4.7%. It is imp imperative to stress here that the alternative energy would not have made roads in contributing to the global energy mix without carefully developed support measures. The deployment of new sustainable energy system may cost more than non-sustainable energy system over the short term, but on the long term, this investment is expected to pay dividends handsomely. The renewable energy subsidies in Spain, for example, contributed to a very rapid de deployment of utility-scale solar farms and rooftop applications, in addition to creating comprehensive value chains serving both local and international markets. Our survey of various examples of renewable energy regulatory structure and support, including the Spanish, the Spanish example with its choice of technology-based subsidies and the generation cap imposed on projects, has informed our ongoing process of developing a regulatory and financial framework to support alternative energy deployment and development in Saudi Arabia. Nuclear energy is also gathering steam. After years of forced hiatus brought about by less than impressed public with the perceived safety of nuclear reactors. This statement I wish to stress does not reflect our assessment of nuclear reactor safety for when compared with other energy generating methods, nuclear has proven to be the safest and the most reliable in the past two decades, thanks to best-in-class in safety and security standards. There is now a nuclear renaissance. In fact, our survey has shown that more than 200 reactors are currently under construction or being planned, amounting to roughly 50% increase in the number of nuclear reactors. The key contributors to this growth are China with 57 reactors, India with 24, Russia with 24, Japan with 14, and South Korea with 14. This resurgence is not limited to traditionally nuclear states, since more than 75 additional reactors are either under construction or being planned in the rest of the world. The nuclear power sector, while in several ways different from a renewable energy sector, still nevertheless require incentivizing and support, particularly in moving forward with 
research and development that focuses on new designs, modularity, and developing robust solution for waste management. In the process of designing a new energy mix, we have been cognizant of the question, what is the cost of producing electricity from alternative sources of energy in Saudi Arabia? Several key parameters must be considered in developing the benefit cost analysis of alternative energy deployment. These parameters include oil prices, electricity demand pattern, and financial investment parameters, which themselves include discount rates, leverage, and cost of capital based on various scenarios of government and private sector participation. The royal vision articulated by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz, in establishing King Abdullah City for Atomic and Renewable Energy, KAK, paved the way for creating a sustainable energy mix that would respond to the growing demand on electricity and desalinated water. The royal vision, ladies and gentlemen, is to make KA care the driving force for making atomic and renewable energy an integral part of the national sustainable energy mix in Saudi Arabia, creating and leveraging the competitive advantage of relevant technologies for the social and economic development of the kingdom. KA care aims at contributing to the sustainable development in Saudi Arabia through utilization, innovation, science, research, and industry related to atomic and renewable energy for peaceful purposes in a way that leads to raising the standards of living and quality of life in Saudi Arabia. This is almost a verbatim from the royal order establishing KAK. This action sits in motion a series of initiatives designed to transit Saudi Arabia from a total dependence on fossil fuel for electricity generation and water desalination toward a sustainable energy mix. In the work we have carried out for developing a proposed energy mix, we carefully examined many scenarios, both in terms of alternative energy capacity and the technologies proposed. The sustainable energy mix as we envision it will, would minimize the share of fossil fuel generation by 2050. But before we delve into the mix of options and scenarios of the proposed energy mix, I would like to share with you the mandate that guides our work. KA care responsibility spans developing various policies, strategies, laws, and regulation, acting as a national regulatory authority for atomic energy, identifying and conducting research and development activities, and promoting technology and innovation in the field of atomic and renewable energies, and developing the necessary human capacity that will implement this new de development. Furthermore, supporting, enabling, and promoting the successful execution of the proposed plan and working diligently on empowering the private sector through carefully tailored investment initiative that may include technology development, generation capacity deployment, desalination, manufacturing, procurement, and acquisition. Representing Saudi Arabia internationally in the areas of atomic and renewable energy and developing the necessary physical city that would house all the necessary facilities for KA care. This mandate positions KA care as a strong enabler to develop the atomic and renewable energy sector in Saudi Arabia, leveraging the vision, the resources, and the resolve to deliver on its mandate. The, AK, the KA Care team, with extensive consultation with stakeholders both inside and outside the kingdom, has been hard at work developing the sustainable energy mix for Saudi Arabia by looking at conditions that affect the respective choices. Several parameters stand out as key factors 
to use in comparing various options. The economics of saved oil, electricity and desalination demand pattern, the technology choices, the physical and regulatory infrastructure requirements, the human capacity requirements, and the value chain development in the atomic and renewable energy. With these criteria, we considered the following technical framing condition for the energy mix discussion. The change in peak load in Saudi Arabia between summer and winter exceed 40%. Our people in the electricity sector know this very well. Whereas daily load variation, both in summer and in winter, while pronounced, are less so than seasonal variation. The implication from this is that nuclear generation may be suitable for base load in winter with the combination of renewable and fossil fuel fitting the bill for the, for the remaining load. Summer is a bit more complicated since the peak load for Saudi Arabia comes in the early afternoon with two other lesser but equally important peaks occurring around early evening and just around dawn. Nuclear remains viable for base load generation during the hot season. And while renewable and are suitable for meeting part of the load balance, without proper economically viable energy storage solution, fossil capacity remains the remaining, the, the primary solution for peak load. With storage capacity, however, coming online, the picture would be significantly different. Here again, innovation, research, and development are the cornerstones for making the currently immature energy storage technology both mature and economically viable. Now, the path toward recommending the optimum energy mix must start by considering all possible scenarios in a limiting conditions approach. Possible scenarios lend themselves to development of plausible scenarios, and from the host of plausible scenarios, we are, we are working on identifying the optimum one to propose. The limiting conditions that we have, we have worked with include three options, namely, business as usual, no new fossil and all renewable, and no new fossil and all nuclear. The analysis took into consideration financial, technical, and logistic issues when assessing the impact of limiting condition on scenario development. The first limiting option is keeping business as usual. The challenge with this option, as we have seen, is that there would, be, would, there would be significant increase in oil consumption that may affect our ability to meet international demand on oil. The second limiting condition is to only introduce renewable energy capacity with no additional fossil capacity. The, channel, the challenge of this option is that base load demand cannot be met except with prohibitively expensive investment in relatively immature storage technologies. And without mature storage, the dispatchability issue of renewable energy would limit its role significantly. The third limiting option is to only increase, to only introduce nuclear energy capacity with no additional fossil or renewable capacity. The challenge for this option is that Nuclear projects take long time to come online, necessitating the use of other generation sources until then. Coupled with the fact that nuclear generation is not suitable for seasonal and daily load variation. 